Okay, so let's look at this problem. It's a good one. That last problem was a little bit too easy. Everything canceled. Everything uh, dropped out to zero. Uh, this one, it's going to be harder, more fun. Okay. All right, so we have an insulated 8 cubic meter tank that contains air at initially at this pressure and this temperature, 600 and 400. All right, a valve connected to the tank is now open and air is allowed to escape. All right, does that, does that tell you unsteady flow? We had this air in the tank. You know, at this at a pressure of 600 and temperature of 400, but now air is allowed to escape until the pressure inside drops to 200 kPa. Air temperature during the process is maintained by an electric resistance heater placed in the tank. Determine the electrical energy supply to the air during this process. Okay. You know, sometimes I'm not even sure exactly what I'm given, exactly what I'm trying to find, uh, and this probably isn't a good. Thing to start working before you know your roadmap, before you know where you're going. But I think our our conservation of energy equation tells us the roadmap, and so that that's the first thing I'm going to write on these equations is my conservation of energy. Q plus W plus N E M N H N minus M out H out equals M final. Let's see, should I use U or H? Uh, I think this is a rigid tank. That's not exactly a rigid tank. I mean, it says 8 cubic meter tank. Um, and so this isn't telling me that, that the... Um, that the... Uh, bound, the volume is changing. And it's definitely not a constant pressure process, actually. It is a constant temperature process. So I'm using U. M2U2 plus M initial U initial. Okay, so let's, let's reread this problem statement. And all these words, you know, have meaning. All these words will kind of give us hints into, um, into this equation. So insulated, insulated means no heat transfer. Now, maybe first day of class, second day of class, we said insulated means like no mass and no energy can cross boundaries. But it, now we're saying that insulated is talking about heat transfer. So when you see insulated, that means no heat transfer. Um, is there any work? Is there any work? Well, that, that, that's really what it, it is asking us for. Uh, yeah, there, there's a resistance heater, an electric heater. So we're going to call that Q instead of, I mean, we're gonna call that W, uh, instead of Q. So, so yes, there is work. There is electrical energy supplied to the air during this process. All right. So, Yes, air is escaping, but no, air is not coming in. So this inlet term is zero. Um, it starts at 600 kPa and 400 K. It ends with a pressure of 200 kPa, and the temperature is maintained. So anyway, yeah, it does have some initial stuff. It does have some final stuff. All right, so that equation really doesn't simplify much, but it simplifies to the work due to that uh, electric heater. The work. This is what we're trying to find right here. This W is what we're trying to find. Minus M out H out equals M to U to my, this should be minus right. Minus M one u1 so if this is what we're trying to find then we better know we need to know all six of these things and i don't think we know that just yet i think we can find some right i think we can find some uh how how do we want to start um i want to start with you know it it, it told us See, it told us uh, the pressure and temperature that it started. It told us the pressure and temperature that it ended with. You know, I think we might could find these U's and H's from the property tables. Uh, and so actually, because this is air, we can look at our air property tables. So let's say, kind of take a side note. I'm going to try to find U1, U2, and H out. 
because this is air, I can look at my air property table. So table A17. And so for table A17, you see that all of the properties are um, dependent on the temperature. All the properties are dependent on the temperature. So the U initial at 400 Kelvin, look at our property tables. Property tables, table A17, 400 Kelvin, the U 286.16. The U is 286.16. Let's go back to our notes. The 286.16 kilojoules per kilogram. The U final, the U final. Uh, the pressure final is 200, and it says the air. The air temperature is maintained. Air, the temperature is maintained constant. It's telling it keeps that temperature a constant uh, by that electric heater. So it, it is still at 400 K. So it is still at 286.16 kilojoules per kilogram. So my U1 is 286. My U2 is 286.16. Should now don't do this, don't do this. But your instinct might be to say, Oh, well, if this is the same as this, then that right hand side of my equation is going to be zero. No, because this is not the same as this. The mass one is not the same as the mass two. So don't, don't take too many shortcuts. All right, so yes, u2 is equal to u1, and maybe I like to put a little check mark when I've got them. All right, and so the h. H out. All right. So we're lucky here that the H starts going out at 400K and it stay, it is still going out at 400K. Uh, so I can take the H at 400K. Now, what if the temperature had been changing? What if the temperature started at 400K and it ended at 200K? Um, then I would for this U that it started at, I would have 400K. The U that it ended at, I would have 200K. This is a completely different problem. What would I do here for the H of the outlet? Well, initially the H was starting to go out at its at the beginning temperature, but then towards the end the H is going out at its ending temperature. Use the H at the average temperature. Or you can use the H going out at 400 and the H going out at 200 and average those. All right, so so we're lucky here that it stays at a constant temperature, so that H is all the time going out at 400 Kelvin. So go back to that uh, property table, the H, table A17, H at 400 Kelvin is 400.98 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, so then I've got that one. I said, oh, so now I need those masses, M1, M2, and M out. Well, this is air, and so I can use PV equals MRT, right? Because I know the pressure and the temperature for both of these cases, a U for initial and for final. So let me do, let's see, P initial, V initial equals M initial, RT initial, right? 600 kPa times the volume 8 meter cube equals M initial is what I'm trying to find. R, right, that's in property table 1 for air. The R gas constant 0.287 kPa meter cubed per kilogram K, go back to our notes, 0.287 kPa meter cubed per kilogram K times the temperature, 400 K, M1, 41.81 kilograms. That is the mass that it started with in the tank, 41.81 kilograms. 
Okay, so I've got that. How about M2? Well, I know P2, V2, P2, V2, M1, R, T, sorry, M2, R, T2. All right, so this would be 200 kPa. 8, M2, 0.287, uh, 400, M2, 13.94 kilograms. All right, now here is what I always forget about, or not always forget about, but sometimes forget about. My next step is, oh, can I find the mass of the outlet? Can I find the mass of the H? Well, I haven't done conservation of mass yet. I know that the mass in minus the mass out equals M final minus M initial. There is no M going in, so negative M out equals M2 minus M1 equals this 13.94 minus 41.81. Uh, 27, so the mass out 27.87 kilograms. Now, I, I used conservation of mass. You could have just intuitively known that, hey, if I started with 41 kilograms and I ended with 13 kilograms, then how much mass went out? So you could just ask yourself in a sentence, you know, I started with 41 kilograms of air, I ended with 13 kilograms of air, how much mass went out? 27.87 kilograms. But if you like the process, if you like these equations, then that you could get from conservation of mass equations. So there we go. Look at that. We got all those check marks. And now I can solve for the W. Now I can solve for the W. All right. So it would be W minus the mass going out 27.87. Kilograms times the H going out 400.98 kilojoules per kilogram equals the mass final 37.94 times the U final 286.16 kilojoules per kilogram minus the mass initial 41.81 times the U Initial 286.16. There we go. So then we've got that, and our only unknown is the W. So this would be the work that we put in to that electrical resistance heater to keep the temperature constant. The work, 3,200 kilojoules. I might have rounded a little bit too much. forget what this came out to, because I do like three or four significant figures. Um, but the work, 3,200 kilojoules right there. Okay, so let's take a step back. Let's review. It's good to review these problems. Take a step back. Look at what we did. We saw that it was unsteady. We wrote our unsteady conservation of energy equation. A couple things did uh, go out to zero, but a lot of things stayed. So I just tried to figure out, chip away. Fine. Can I find you one from all the information I was told about the initial stuff? Can I find you two? From all the information I was told about the final stuff. Can I find the H for the information that I know about the fluid that's going out? So now, this one we were lucky that the fluid is always going out at 400. But if the fluid is going out at different states, right? If the fluid is, if it starts going out, you know, at one pressure and temperature and it ends going out at another pressure and temperature, then either take the average state and find the H for that average state or Find the H that it begins going out, the H that it ends going out, and take the average of that H, all right? But, but you need to find the average H. Here, we were lucky, it was always going out at a temperature of 400. Now, the pressure was changing, but the temperature was not changing. And for air, for ideal gases, temperature is what um, the enthalpy and internal energy are dependent on. All right, so, so here, H was going out at that, and then... I used, because it was air, right, because it was an idle gas, PV equals MRT, PV equals MRT. If it's air, hydrogen, nitrogen, CO2, use the idle gas equation, but don't do use the idle gas equation for uh, s steam and liquid vapor mixtures. For steam and definitely not liquid vapor mixtures, 
don't use the ideal gas equation. And then don't forget, sometimes I will forget about this, don't forget about conservation of energy. Probably going to use conservation of energy in all of these unsteady flow equations. Use your conservation of energy to get everything, all right, and then solve for the unknown. Okay? All right.